fit that far uh, because I am not going to wear my mask. But uh, for those of you in the front rows, I can't promise anything. Um, if you are watching on Facebook Live, uh, my son Jimmy is running through those slides. And we can see that it's different today. It's coming in and out. I hope that you've been blessed by the words on the screen uh, to be able to uh, sing along with us. Um, I think many of you know that I love to sing. Uh, I, I do I love to sing it. And, uh, and one of the things that I love is hymns, gospel hymns. And uh, whenever, you, whenever you go back to the Bible and you study and you think about what, what the words that were written meant to them back in that day, it's called exegesis. And I like to exegete the hymns because some of them were written a long time ago. And they can have a different meaning, a slightly different meaning than, than what we might read in them today. So, uh, y'all, y'all sing, uh, y'all sing these songs with me right quick. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Alas, it did my Colossians 
Colossians 1, 21 says, Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. Titus 3, 3 says, At one time we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. Now, I don't know about you, but this stuff sounds pretty contemptible to me. It sounds pretty wretched to me. Uh, a long time ago, several several years ago, my, my kids were a little bitty, and we had this skunk problem at our house. And so I had a friend that's a government tracker, and, uh, and he brought over a trap and then some some chemicals that were going to take care of our skunk problem. And it did. But do you know what stinks worse than a skunk? It's a dead skunk under your shed. That begins to, to really, really stink. And before we were Christians, we were dead. Before we were Christians, we were like a dead skunk. And, and it's going to take more. It, it, it took more than, than just a bath to get the stink off. Instead, it took a death, and it took a burial, and it took a resurrection for us to smell righteous again. Some people um, have thought, and we'll continue with the, with the song idea, the Just As I Am song. We sing a lot of times at the invitation song. Uh, some people hear the Just As I Am, and so think, well, I'm okay. God's going to take me just, just as I am. I am good enough to get into heaven just as I am. Warren Buffett, uh, a while back, announced that he was giving most of his fortune uh, to charity. And he was worth about $44 billion. And so he decided he could afford $37 billion to be given to charity. That only left him with $7 billion. I don't know how he made it on that. But, uh, but it did, it did, uh, he did donate $37 billion, which went mainly to the uh, Bill and, and uh, Melinda Gates Foundation. Now, as he, was, as he was presenting his gift to the, to the gates, he made this remark, and I'm going to read it. There's more than one way to get to heaven, but this is a good way. On Judgment Day, I think that, uh, that Warren Buffett is going to be in for a surprise. Because no matter how rich you are, no matter how much you give, without Jesus, we're children of wrath. Without Jesus, we're like the rest of mankind. It doesn't matter if you don't self-identify as a wretch or a worm or an enemy, an enemy of God uh, or like the song we started with this morning, like a no-good sinner. Jesus is the one who is going to save us because we've all fallen short of the glory of God and none of us deserves heaven. But there's good news because look at this. Next verse that you've been looking at for a while, it looks like. But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespass, trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace. By grace, you have been saved. God saved us not because we deserved it. We don't deserve to be saved. But he saves us because he loves us. For God so loved the world, he saved us. I read a, a story of a man who is on his deathbed, and I've actually seen this before. Uh, but a man who is on his deathbed, and he looked up at his wife and he said, Tell me I'm a good man. Tell me I've been good enough. Tell me I've done enough. A lot of people struggle with that. Uh, a lot of people just wonder if they're going to make it to heaven, if they've been good enough to make it to heaven. They know they have. They know they haven't been good enough to make it to heaven. Maybe they're just not going to pass that final exam. Maybe they're not going to pass the exam you've got to take before you go into heaven. In the dictionary, there's another definition of the word wretch, and it's the, like number one, here's the number two definition of wretch, and it says, an unfortunate or unhappy person. When you're at the end of your life and you're on your deathbed, it's going to be very difficult to be happy if you don't know where you're going. It's going to be very difficult to be unhappy if you do not have a sh 
assurance of salvation. What they need to hear, what we need to hear. What we need to hear is what God says. And through Scripture and and through His Word, He says, I love you and I've got you covered. No, you haven't been good enough, but I poured out the blood of my Son on you so that you can be washed and you are righteous before me and you are going to come into my presence. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past. I love you and I want you to. To be with me. Good deeds aren't going to get you anywhere, but my grace is sufficient. I want you to come home. There's an old uh, story that I really like that um, a man uh, came to the pearly gates and and he met Peter and uh, and Peter stopped and he said, "We have a new system here in heaven, and you've got to gain enough points." That's what I don't like the gaining of points because you know that we don't gain points. But he said, you've got to come up with 30,000 points to enter heaven. And uh, so you've got to make your case. What have you done to earn points? And he said, well, I was a member of the uh, Gatesville. I was a member of Gatesville Church of Christ. He said, that's worth two points. And he said, okay, well, I gave most of my money to the poor. He said, oh, that's another. That's worth another two points. And he said, I have to get 30,000 points. I'm not going to make this except for the grace of God. Peter said, that's the risk. That's the risk. That's the 30,000 points that you need to get in to heaven. If you're not sure, if you're not sure of your salvation, there's there's a, a few things I want you to hear. God loves you, and he wants to be with you. And he has made a way through Jesus. And what we can do is we can believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We can accept that we are sinners and we're not good enough and we cannot make it to heaven on our own. When you believe that, you've got to tell the world, I have given my life to Jesus Christ and and that is who is Lord and Master of my life now. And then allow yourself to be buried, to be buried into the waters of baptism. Let Jesus wash that stink off and you rise up a new and sin-free, saved-by-grace Christian and follower of Jesus Christ. If that's your desire today and you're in this room, I want to invite you to come to the front and make your needs known. We'd love to to answer that. If you're watching on Facebook Live and that's something you desire, please comment in the section. We'll notice your comment. And uh, and we will get in touch with you as soon as possible to, to meet that need in your life.